Sciatica is the term that's used to refer to lower back, hip, and pain that can shoot all the way down your leg, usually on one side. That can be the result of lumbar disc issues, sacroiliac joint issues. The sacroiliac joint is the joint that joins the spine to the pelvis. But it can also be the result of very weak hip rotators. And when you have weak or tight hips, movements that would ideally come from the hips are borrowed from the lower back and the sacroiliac joint. So sciatica is extremely common. And of all the back issues can become the most chronic. So the yoga poses I've included in this sequence are designed to increase flexibility in the hips, increase stability in the sacroiliac joint, and specifically to address the external rotators of the hip so that you become more educated about your patterns and more aware, and most importantly, you have less sciatica pain. Lie on your back in constructive rest with a blanket under your head. Close your eyes. This exercise for freeing the sacrum is wonderful for bringing awareness and ease to the movement of the sacrum. A V-shaped bone at the base of the spine where the spine joins the pelvis. Exhale and press your sacrum to the mat to identify the bone. The sacrum has a top where it joins the lumbar spine and a bottom where it joins the tailbone. In this exercise, we're going to rock gently from top to bottom in a very slight seesaw action. Again, everything is done quite gently. Exhaling, press the top of the sacrum to the mat. Pause. Inhaling, press the base of the sacrum down. And pause. Once again, exhale, top sacrum presses down. Inhale, seesaw back, pressing the base of the sacrum down. Repeat this a couple of more times on your own, feeling that slight seesaw action. Now rest with the sacrum centered. This exercise is a sacral stabilizer. Start lying on your back in constructive rest and hold your hips. You're going to keep your hips fixed as you now exhale and lift your right foot a couple of inches off the floor. Trying not to move your hips or sacrum at all. Put the foot down. Let's do that again. Hold your hips and trying to keep your hips and sacrum fixed in place, exhale and lift your right foot again. If you can keep your hips stable, slowly push your knee in toward your chest as far as possible, again without the pelvis or sacrum moving at all. Don't expect big movement at first. Bring that foot down and we'll do the other side. Don't be surprised if the two sides are quite different. So keeping the hip and sacrum fixed, lift the left foot slightly.
Pressing the left belly toward the floor may help you to keep the pelvis stable. Put the foot down. Now exhaling, lift the left foot again and keeping the pelvis stable, pull the knee toward the chest. Move only as far as you can without the hips moving. Don't try too hard. Make it as easy as possible. Now release back to constructive rest. And do a couple of sacral rocks. Exhaling the top of the sacrum to the floor. Inhaling the base of the sacrum to the floor. Back and forth a couple more times. Reclining Half Lotus is another pose in which the main focus is to stabilize the sacroiliac joints. Beginning in constructive rest, hold your hips to help keep the pelvis and sacrum fixed. Inhale, lift your right foot off the floor, bringing the knee over the hip. Now slowly raise your right foot to knee level. Turn the right knee out, sliding the foot to the front of the left knee to reclining half lotus. All without moving the pelvis. Not easy. Push the right thigh slightly away to deepen the action. But don't overdo that. Be gentle so the pelvis doesn't shift. Inhale, slide your foot off your knee and return to constructive rest. Now holding your pelvis fixed, lift your left foot. Exhale the foot to knee level and rotate the leg out, sliding the foot to the front of the right knee. For some people, the structure of the hip joint will affect how much rotation is available. Everyone's different. The main interest is stable pelvis, even if you can't turn your knee out far at all. You can gently press against the left thigh to intensify the action. All the while keeping the hips level. Now slide your foot back to the floor and hug your knees. From constructive rest, clasp your right knee in your hands and swing your foot to knee level so the thigh is perpendicular to the floor. Exhaling, press the knee against the hands and resist by pulling down on the knee to engage muscles in the fixed position. Also, exhale and pull the right abs in from upper to lower belly to flatten the back on the floor. Continue to breathe steadily. Inhale, release, returning to constructive rest. Keeping the hips level, Raise your left foot holding the knee and swing the foot to knee level. Pull down on the knee and push back knee to hands. Don't try too hard. And gently press the left belly from upper to lower abdomen to the floor. Noticing 
if this side is easier or stronger than the right. And release to constructive rest. This is an exercise that benefits from repetition. You can alternate between sides, though if you have sciatica symptoms, repeat just your painful side two or three more times, staying for three or four breaths each time. Exhaling, press the knee against the hands and resist by pulling down on the knee to engage muscles in the fixed position. Also, exhale and pull the right abs in from upper to lower belly to flatten the back on the floor. Continue to breathe steadily. Inhale, release, returning to constructive rest. Raise your left foot holding the knee and swing the foot to knee level. and release to constructive rest. Clasp your head with elbows wide. First, we'll repeat the sacral rock that you practiced earlier. Inhale the base of the sacrum to the floor. Breathing out, tip the top sacrum toward the mat. Again, inhale, pressing the base of the sacrum toward the floor, and this time hold that position. You'll be able to feel a very shallow tunnel form under your lower back. Maintain that tunnel, and with an exhalation, lift both feet slightly off the floor. Keep your breathing steady. Pull your front lower ribs towards your hips. Now put your feet down and rest for a moment. Let's repeat this and add an additional challenge. Again, press the base of the sacrum down to form a very small tunnel under your lower back. Exhaling, lift your feet without pressing the back to the floor. Keep breathing steadily pulling your front ribs towards your hips. On your next exhalation, raise your head and arms an inch off the floor, keeping the elbows wide. And release to the floor. Lying in constructive rest, hold your right knee. Inhale, raise your left leg toward the ceiling, and exhaling, slowly lower it to the floor. Keep the left leg active, making the back leg longer than the front, imagining that length originating from the upper belly. Clasp your hands behind your right thigh, and press the leg into the hands until your elbows are straight. Keep your hips level and gently press the base of the hips toward the floor, relaxing the upper belly. Still pressing against the hands, slowly begin to swing your right foot toward the ceiling to straighten the leg. Move slowly, keeping the sacrum grounded and the hips level. Don't overdo this. It's better to keep the knee bent than to lose the alignment of your lower back and hips. You'll find that by staying in this pose, For over a minute, your muscles will begin to adapt and the movement becomes easier.
Now inhale to release and we'll change sides. Breathing in, extend your right leg up. And breathing out, slowly lower the right leg to the floor, making the back leg longer than the front and keeping the leg active. Even as you now push your left leg against your hands and bring the base of the sacrum to the floor. Again, keep this action gentle. Slowly and on an out breath, swing your left foot up as close to straight as possible without disrupting the alignment of the sacrum and hips. Again, holding this position for a minute or more will allow the muscles of the hips and legs, as well as the back, to adapt to this range of motion. And the pose will become easier and easier. Breathe in as you bend your knee. Breathing out, return to constructive rest. Lie on your back with your feet mat width apart and turn slightly out. If your inner knee hurts to do that, keep the feet parallel and narrow your stance slightly. Now pressing your feet down, Breathe in, push your knees forward over your toes. And breathing out, pull your inner thighs back towards the hips to raise the hips as high as possible. Don't tuck or grip the glutes. Inhale, release, and return to constructive rest. Let's repeat this variation of bridge shoulder stand. So you're on your back, your feet are mat width apart, and turn slightly out. Inhale, push the knees forward, and exhale, pull your inner thighs back to the hips to raise the hips without tucking or gripping the glutes. Breathe steadily. Then inhale and release to the floor, returning to constructive rest. This is an active version of child pose. You begin kneeling on hands and knees with a block between your feet. You can do this on a blanket if your knees need padding. Gently draw the belly in without tucking so the lower back is flat but not hard. Pressing down with your hands, push your hips towards the feet. Feel you're slightly lifting your sit bones as you do this. Again, be careful not to tuck or to have a sway back, just a long, fluid spine. Try to press back until your hips touch the block. Return to table pose, keeping the support in the core, and we'll repeat. Again, press down with your hands to push the pelvic floor toward the feet while keeping the back long. Press all the way back to the block. And this time rest on the block, bringing your head to the floor or folded arms. 
If you're unable to sit on the block, keep your hips high over your knees, enough to allow you to also rest your head on your hands. Now breathing in, coming up to sit, and straighten your legs out in front of you. This pose in the next may not be possible if you have had knee replacement or recent surgery. Simply omit these poses from your practice if that's the case. For fire log pose, Fold a blanket into thirds as I'm showing and place the blanket under your sit bones. Sit cross-legged with the right ankle in front of the left. Now cradling your right knee and ankle, gently pick up the leg and pull the knee toward the chest. Shift it left, placing your foot on the left knee. If possible, position the foot just past your knee. This can be a bit awkward, so find a place where you're comfortable. Now pull your left foot to your hip. If your knee is quite elevated, extend your left leg straight to feel if it's easier. You can also prop up your knee with a blanket or a block if your knee hurts. Keeping your feet active, exhale and press down on the heel and inner knee. If this pose is easy, deepen the challenge by bringing your foot forward under the knee. Keep your hips even and your breath steady. Cradling your right ankle, come out of the pose by lowering the foot to the floor and returning to simple crossed legs. For the other side, hold your left knee and ankle. Pull the knee in as you shift the leg right, placing the active foot on the right knee and bringing the left knee down as much as possible. Slide your right foot to your hip and straighten your leg or prop your knee if necessary. Balance your weight between your hips and exhaling press your hips evenly to the blanket. If this is easy, deepen the challenge by bringing your right foot under your knee. You can also bend forward. Breathing in, cradle your ankle as you come out of the pose returning to simple crossed legs. Sitting on a folded blanket, straighten your left leg and cradle the right knee and ankle. Bring the knee to the chest as you shift the leg left, stacking the right knee on the left and bringing the foot to the side of the left hip. Once your leg is in place, keep the foot active and press your hands to the floor by your hips to lengthen and strengthen the side body.
Now cradling the knee and ankle, lift the right leg and stretch it out. Let's do the other side. Keeping your right leg straight, pull the left leg in, holding both knee and ankle. Shift the leg right and stack the knees, pulling the foot to the side hip. Place your hands by your hips and exhaling, press down to create a dynamic lift to the side body. Remember to keep your foot active. Cradle the knee and ankle as you gently lift your leg out of the pose and stretch both legs out. The last pose of this therapy practice is a variation of half Lord of the Fishes pose. Sitting on a blanket, keep your left leg straight and pull your right foot in, lining the toes up with the knee at hip width apart. Clasp your hands around your knee and lengthen the spine by lifting from the back belly. Now holding your knee or cradling it in your elbow, exhale and press the right hip firmly down so that you have equal weight between right and left sit bone. Find a steady breathing rhythm. Now exhaling, gently press your right hand to the mat to pull the right side ribs back. And at the same time, press your chest toward your knee. Don't overdo this, no strain. Turn your head to the left, gazing at the front foot. Inhale, release, and straighten your legs. Keeping the right leg straight, place the left foot on the floor at hip width. Toes in line with the right knee and hold the knee. Exhaling, press the left hip firmly to the blanket while lifting from the back belly to make a fluid spine. Cradle the knee in the elbow and take your left hand behind your back. Exhaling, press down and pull the left upper ribs back while gently pressing the right chest toward the knee. Turn your head to the right, gazing at your front foot. Again, no strain, be patient, letting the breath ease you into the pose. Inhale to release and straighten both legs. I recommend lying in Shavasana, the deep relaxation pose, for five minutes or more after every practice. Use any props you're used to that make you more comfortable and allow yourself that time for your body to assimilate the active practice. Relax your breathing and let your body fall back into the floor. Your muscles may hold on to tension that resists such a free falling feeling. You can practice letting go of tension in this way. Bring your mind to your feet. Now flex and tighten your feet, 
holding that for a couple of breaths. Now let them go. Feel that sensation of letting go. Do that again. Flex your feet. You can even feel it tighten your lower leg. Now let it go. What does that feel like? Now tighten your thighs. That strong sensation of effort is easy to feel. Let it go. The sense of release contrasts with the strong effort of tightening the thighs. Feel that again. Tighten the thighs. Feel the effort. Do you feel the body shrinks? Now let it go and feel the body expand. Now tighten your buttocks. And let it go. As your hips relax, you may have an urge to lengthen your back a little bit. And do that again. Squeeze the buttocks together. Feel that tension and let it go. Tight muscles have simply forgotten how to relax and you're reminding them now. Tighten the chest. It may feel familiar. Let it go. Feel your back body spread out on the floor. Isolate that to the shoulders. Tighten the shoulders. And let it go. Do that again. Tighten the shoulders. Feel that go right up into your neck. It's very uncomfortable, but you can let it go.